da, 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 da. Cameron, this person has a backlog of six Audible credits. Oh. Uh, they would like your book suggestions or really anybody else's book suggestions. Uh, um, does everyone want to take one? We'll start with Cameron, though. Heck yes. Uh, I really enjoyed Elizabeth Colbert's The Sixth Extinction. Mm -hmm. If you're into nonfiction, I, I think that's a really good book that's come out in the last couple of years. Or James Glick's The Information. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, which I, I really enjoyed. Uh, I don't know who reads it, though. See, the, the thing with audiobooks is that it really depends heavily on, on who's doing the reading. But those would be my two nonfiction recommendations. Okay. Uh, I open it up to people on the couch or the floor. I have to look up the name. I can't remember again. <laughs> my One of my favorite books of all time. I have two, but I'll wait and see if anyone else doesn't have anything. But my number one book of all time is The Lovely Bones. Oh, I love mm. that book. And for the life of me, I cannot remember the author's name right now. But I've read my book so many times, it no longer has a front cover. <laughs> <laughs> Matthews. Uh, so I am that way with Good Omens. Oh, mm -hmm. and on Audible, uh, BBC Radio Four did a full cast production of Good Omens. Wow! With cameos by both Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. It mm. is fabulous. Cool. All right. That's that's actually sounds just good, even if I've already read the book. Mm. Alice C. Thank you. It's Alice C. Bold. I knew it was Alice. I didn't remember the last name. Um, other recommendations? I'm not sure if there are audiobooks available of this yet, but I'm assuming that since it was reasonably successful that there is. Uh, I really enjoyed James Vandermeer's uh, Southern Reach trilogy. Mm -hmm. Annihilation uh, is the first book. There was a movie made out of it last year, which was a fine movie that had the same name as a book I like. Which one? Annihilation. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, it, they were tangentially related. I don't know if yeah. translates to audiobook. It's just so, like, even reading, I need to pause to just digest. Yeah. Um, yes, and the Lovely Bones, as a fair warning, is very heavy, lots mm -hmm. of trigger warnings. It's yeah. just very relevant to me, so. Yeah, as much as I love the Lovely Bones, I couldn't even read her other book, Lucky. It it's was too much. That's herself, yeah. based off of her true story, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. one I, I literally got Audible to get this book. And I don't, I'm, gonna mess, I'm afraid I'm going to mess up his last name because I don't know if it's Zach Aner or Zach Aner, but it's if, if at birth you don't succeed. He was born with CP and Ooh. like his, he's wow. so funny. Like he's, um, he did like the whole, um, for Oprah, she had the, like the thing where you can have your own show and he did basically like him trying to do things because he like, he just has such a good sense of humor about it, about life and everything. And yeah, the book is amazing. Like, like he does it himself. He does the uh, the audiobook himself and everything. That's really cool. And yeah, it's just yeah. about his life and like how to just be positive. I, and, I like when yeah. he did it himself. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Like it was the reason I got, I signed up for Audible. It was like I wanted that book. Oh, The Road is another good one. That would oh. be my other one. Yeah, The Road is. Yeah. Um, who reads The Road? I don't know who reads it off the top of my head, but like, it it's good and it's well done. Like my my. Dad gave me a copy of The Road. He's like, you should read this. You'd probably like it. And I was between classes one day, and I just sat down and read it. And it took, like, I think I read it in about 90 minutes or it's, two hours. It's such an easy read, and it's so beautifully written. Like, Cormac McCarthy's prose is just, uh, it's so sparse. I don't even think he uses, I think he limited himself to commas and periods yeah, I don't for think The Road. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, like, the sentence structure is so simple, and it's so stark. Um, and the sentences just flow into one another, so it's actually very difficult to stop reading because there's no natural breaks. Mm -hmm. So you wind up reading this incredibly like bleak book in one sitting, um, and it's great. It's great. It. It's it's very that. heavy, but it's probably it's second, great. Probably my second favorite book of all time. Yeah, like it, the it, it is nonstop. Like it just the visuals in it as well. Like his his way of describing things, like. The beach covered with the translucent bones of sea creatures. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful. It's mm -hmm. like there, it, I, I read a lot of um, <laughs> teen fiction, which is a, one of those dirty secrets. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but once in a while, you get really good lines where it's like, and it, actually, I can't say that one because it's a bit of a trigger. But it's the same idea. It's so descriptive that you're like, 
it's okay that this is about fairies and vampires because the mm. birds are really pretty. I mean, <laughs> one of my favorite book series is literally about fairies, vampires, and wizards. And I've already seen in the chats the, the Dresden. Oh, uh, yeah. Like it's, Jim Butcher's writing style is very simplistic, but it's evocative it's mm. and a ton of fun to read. Uh, uh, like three going in very different directions. I have my favorite books. William Gibson's Pattern Recognition. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. is... Uh, a if you don't have Audible, occasionally uh, there's a reading of it that turns up on the BBC. I don't okay. know what this is. Um, um, Eric? My best description is... It, Gibson started out writing science fiction that became kind of the defining books for cyberpunk. And then his next trilogy was... You had me at Near cyberpunk. Near Future. <laughs> this is sci-fi set about two years ago. When it was or when it was written, and it mm -hmm. still deals with that science fiction element. It's elements of embedded video, uh, dealing with rapidly changing culture, and mm -hmm. um, at this point, it's about a decade old. But it forecasts so many elements of online huh. culture. Yeah, that, like um, it, pattern. What was it called? Pattern, pattern recognition. recognition. Okay. It was possibly one of the first published uses of the word to Google as a verb. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, very good. It, uh, Predated it predicted YouTube by about a year, yeah. I think, because it was written in like 2003 or 2004. I'm sorry, but Valiant Holly Black, that's the there's a quote in that that I was literally going to say that's kind of a trigger and I can't, so you're my favorite person now. <laughs> um, <laughs> goes, oh, go ahead. oh uh, another book that I really enjoyed, um, now it's, it's many years old, but it's called A Complicated Kindness, mm -hmm. and I wound up picking it up because. Um, uh, John Sampson from the Weaker Thans championed it on an uh, annual uh, program on the CBC called Canada Reads, where everyone, like, they, they pick, you know, various artists and, and uh, public figures in Canada and ask them to recommend a book. And he suggested A Complicated Kindness by Miriam Taves. Mm. And it's about um, uh, a Mennonite girl from the prairies. And The Complicated Kindness in the title refers to um, uh, this family where I think the mother has been shunned by the community and uh, as one of the consequences of that the, 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 the mother and father are not to sleep in the same bed or share a table so what they do is they get two beds and they push them together and uh, put one sheet over it and they get two tables and they put one tablecloth over it and that's the, the complicated kindness of trying to obey your church and your community while still loving someone. Oh, I love right? that. Ben and I had two beds in Australia hmm. that were way too close together. <laughs> so the other book I was going to recommend uh, was a Booker Prize winner from, I think, 2004, Alan Hollinghurst's A Line of Beauty. Hmm. Uh, it's about running an architecture magazine, and mostly it's about cocaine, gay sex, and Margaret Thatcher. Into it. Ooh. Yeah. Highly recommended. Um, possibly a niche, but very okay. well written. Uh, and the other, the last one was, uh, it was actually, it's both well written and very well translated. It was originally a Spanish author, uh, Carlos Ruiz Zafon, mm -hmm. uh, with The Shadow of the Wind. Okay. Uh, it's a primarily a romance set in like 1950s-ish Barcelona mm -hmm. with the uh, graveyard of lost books, I believe. Okay. Uh, it's one of the few books that um, myself, my father, my mother, and my grandmother all enjoyed. Huh. What was it called again? Shadow of the Wind. Shadow of the Wind, okay. And I it's both, like I said, both well-written and very well-translated. Huh. And that, that's always the challenge with books crossing language barriers yeah. is that it can be very good in its original language but unless the translator also has that connection with it. Well because there are the words that have full meanings that there are not meanings for in English yeah. so yeah, yeah you can really really bust yourself up. And, and this was audiobooks so things with chi like China Mobiles, the city in the city just doesn't translate well into audio since mm. there's... Yeah a lot of textual yeah. stuff in there. Um, usually rounds out my list going in like four directions at once. Yeah, I haven't read any, any of China Mayville in like, I think the last one I read was Embassy Town. He actually has a nonfiction one that came out last year that was a history of uh, the, uh, Russia in 1917. Really? Um, oh, that sounds quite interesting. So yeah, the, uh, yeah, the uh, surprise, surprise, the uh, guy with the doctorate in Marxist Interpretations of International Law is 
yeah. interest in the revolutions of 17. I mean, uh, go figure. <laughs> uh, but it was a very readable um, version of it, um, culminating in the, the events that came to success, but the, the multiple revolutions across that year. Mm -hmm. While we're on the topic of books, alley. does anyone have a phone I could borrow? I need to look up a yep. book um, because it's super, super important. I'm actually really curious about um, uh, if there are audiobooks of Anne Leckie's ancillary, um, ancillary justice books. Because I rem I enjoyed those quite a lot. They came recommended to me by a friend and I, I liked them. Um, and I know she's working on a new book, right? Or no, her new book came out last year. I think just in time for Christmas. I should get that. Get that. Um, oh yeah, wow, Calvino, good call, Faili. So there's one book that I want to mention that I don't think is going to be on like Audible or anything like that, but it's called, and this is super. I I just I need to. It's called A Quick and Easy Guide to They, Them Pronouns. Oh, okay. And it's by uh, Archie and Tristan. So if you look up, um, I don't want to mispronounce Archie's last name, but it's Tristan Jimerson. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, really good read. And I just really wanted everyone to know that that exists. So for anyone out there that's like, I don't really understand it, there's a book. And please go look it up. And then also uh, N.K. Jemison's, uh is it the Stone Sky Trilogy? Um, it won like basically every award a couple of years ago. They're excellent. Nice. Hmm. 